Hi, I'm going to give you a walkthrough of motion tracking for animation in Adobe After Effects. So let's go ahead and bring in the files we're going to work with. This is the video file that I'm going to be motion tracking. And I have one image file that I'll be okay when I bring in my Photoshop image file that I want to animate this is very important <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and keep it as edible layers rather than merging it all into one but do not choose retain layer size make sure to choose composition in a lot of other cases it's better to choose retain layer size for animating to motion tracking, it's very important to choose composition, which will keep it. When I made this image file, it is the same dimensions as the project I'm going to be working in. And I'll go ahead and start a new project here. As you can see, the image file is the same dimensions as the project and I'm gonna go ahead and then bring the video file in here also it's just it makes the job a lot easier to have you can go ahead and change put markers in just like they do in the movies when they put all those ping pong balls on their actors um, makes it easier to motion track so that's where the markers are down in the video footage so I'm gonna go ahead and trim the footage to that by dragging and hitting shift so it'll click. So we'll go ahead and start back here. I'm going to turn off the image file for now. Now I want to track two points. So right click and choose a new null object. So you've got null one and I'll click on it and hit control D to copy it and duplicate it and it'll make two null objects click and hit enter and the first one we'll just call point A title them to make it easier for you to read that's how you choose what to title them sometimes I'll title them you know hand elbow right now I'm just gonna title them A and B so the first one is A make sure you have the motion track window open over here click the video you want to motion track from click motion tracker and it brings up a new window and then make sure to go down here into edit target and make sure that A is selected you can see if you want to track A select A and then with options it kinda of depends there isn't a great difference there is, this would be good for luminance because that red dot is actually a lot darker than yellow but it depends on the light there have been cases where the red gets about as light as the yellow and surrounding areas and, and it actually works better to have RGB very helpful is stop tracking if it, if it is uh, below 80 percent that makes it easier and make sure that the timeline is where you want to start tracking that the um, timeline indicator so and then you have the little box here you drag it to the area you want to track and I'm gonna go ahead and make that box bigger the outside box is uh, the inside box is uh, kind of around the area that you want to stay targeted on the outside box is just to um, help the computer decide what the surrounding area looks like and I'm gonna do it like that so we're all set up here and we can go ahead and start tracking so the computer is gonna track away um, you're welcome to get a cup of coffee and we'll be right back
Okay, um, the first motion track is done, and what you do next is hit apply, and then choose XY, and if you go to the A null object, click on it, hit P, all of these keyframes are from the motion tracking. <coughs> and then repeat that for B. And to repeat for B, I'll choose the video file again, click motion track, and this time make sure that the B null object is selected. And follow through like you did for A. One quick note, when you're choosing whether, when you're choosing what channel to use to track with, luminous is bright and dark. Like as an example, that red does look darker than the yellow and blue around it. And RGB stands for red, green, blue, which basically means color, that you're choosing it by the color. And I've been finding like you can motion track for a while, stop the motion tracking, and then choose a different channel and see which one works better. Okay, so the motion track for B null is ready to apply. Done tracking. Hit apply. Choose X and Y. And we're good to go. We've got two null objects that are now tracked. And now what we can do is go back and we're going to go to pick the picture layer. Double click on it and then pick the puppet tool and go to one end and create a puppet pin and go to another end and create a puppet pin and then we want to let's go ahead and below the escape key on the keyboard if you select the timeline and then hit the uh, key the, the squiggly key below the uh, escape key on the keyboard it'll expand that window and now in the image layer, go to the puppet effect and go ahead and open up the position points for the both of the pins. And go to your null objects and make sure that the click on each one and hit P to make sure position is open in them. So you want to go to the first pin and alt click on the stopwatch and that makes it so that you can apply an expression and take the pick whip and pick the null, the appropriate null position. It doesn't matter for this but let's say if one of these nulls is for the elbow make sure that you pick whip the you make sure the right pin goes to the right null object. You want the elbow puppet pin to go to the elbow null object. That kind of thing. And then let's just take a look at what's happening. Do you see how when we did that the image has moved? So now let's go ahead and click alt click on the stopwatch here and then go ahead and pick the position for the B null object and then just click somewhere around here to close that expression out and now what we have is an image that is following those two null objects. 
And let's see if we go back. So now we've got, looks like it's upside down, but um, I'm going to correct that real quick just by switching the pins and I'll get back. Okay, so I went ahead and did that and basically what you've done is you've made it so that the pins follow the null object. I'm going to render that and show you the effect that we get. So I hope this has been helpful and please check out my website at solomation.com. Leave any questions in the comments and you can get me to make more tutorials by hitting the like button and all that good stuff. And I hope you have a great day.